Majority rule. Everybody gets one vote for their favorite choice, and the choice with more than half the votes wins. It's simple, easy to understand, and we use it everywhere. But is it really the best system to use? And more importantly, is it fair? Is the discontent we feel in our voting system an unlucky coincidence or result of the system that we use? Let's say that you and a bunch of your friends walk up to Professor Oak to get your very first Pokemon. He agrees to give each of you a Charmander, a Squirtle, or a Bulbasaur. But he's had problems in the past with some trainers trying to cheat by picking later to get an advantage over their rivals. To solve this, he'll give all of you the same type of Pokemon, but you gotta decide on some way to agree on which Pokemon you all wanna get. How would you design a voting system to make sure that everyone is happy? All voting systems have two main components, how to vote and how to turn those votes into a result. For example, let's look at how majority rule works. The way we vote is by casting a ballot for the Pokemon that's our favorite. The way we turn the votes into a result is by tallying how many votes each Pokemon gets and picking the Pokemon that gets at least half the votes. As we design our voting system, we'll say that all of the trainers will vote by ranking their preferences from favorite to least favorite. We'll leave how we count the votes as a question mark for now. Notice that giving one vote for your favorite choice falls under this style, as we can just count the favorite for each voter and ignore the bottom preferences. So everything that we discuss also applies to most current voting systems. As we try to come up with a good way to turn votes into a result for our system, let's think of some important properties that we might want to have. One property might be unanimity. What this means is that if literally every single person prefers Charmander over Bulbasaur, then the result should be that Charmander beats Bulbasaur. Another property is independence of irrelevant alternatives. Basically what this means is that if the group prefers Charmander over Bulbasaur, removing Squirtle should still leave Charmander over Bulbasaur since Squirtle has nothing to do with that choice. Another way to think of it is if I move Squirtle up or down on my list, it doesn't change the fact that I still like Charmander more than Bulbasaur, so the group's preference of Charmander to Bulbasaur shouldn't change. With just these two properties, let's take a quick pause. We've actually just created a dictatorship. That's right, the only system that satisfies our conditions for a fair election is one in which one person and one person alone decides the entire election, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Let's dig into it to understand exactly how this happened. Let's pretend we have a situation where every trainer puts Bulbasaur above Charmander. Because of unanimity, the result is that Bulbasaur beats Charmander. Now, one at a time, we instead imagine if each voter instead had Charmander at the top of their list. Eventually, everyone will have Charmander at the top, and by unanimity, Charmander must be Bulbasaur. This means that at some point, one specific person moving Charmander to the top will cause the result to flip from Bulbasaur beating Charmander to Charmander beating Bulbasaur. This person is pivotal for Charmander to beat Bulbasaur, and we'll call him Mr. F. Remember that we haven't decided on what our voting system is going to be, so Mr. F could be anyone from the first person to the last person. Let's rewind the scenario to when Mr. F has Charmander at the bottom of his list, and we'll look specifically at a situation where everyone before Mr. F puts Charmander first, Squirtle second, and Bulbasaur third. Mr. F, as well as everyone after him, puts Bulbasaur first, Charmander second, and Squirtle last. Remember that at this point, the result is that Bulbasaur beats Charmander. Also, Charmander beats Squirtle by unanimity. So currently the result is Squirtle last, Charmander second, and Bulbasaur as the winner. Now we look at the situation where Mr. F instead has Charmander at the top of his list. Here the result instead says that Charmander beats Bulbasaur since Mr. F is the pivot. 
because the order of Bulbasaur relative to Squirtle is the same as the previous scenario, the group still says that Bulbasaur beats Squirtle. We can imagine other scenarios like the current vote, but people other than Mr. F has Squirtle above Charmander. However, because of the independence of irrelevant alternatives, Bulbasaur beats Squirtle in all of those scenarios since the relative rank of Bulbasaur to Squirtle still matches the previous vote. Charmander still beats Bulbasaur in all of those situations as well for the same reason. But look at what's happened! Even if everyone other than Mr. F has Squirtle above Charmander, the result will always be Charmander first, Bulbasaur second, and Squirtle last. So now, the result is that Charmander beats Squirtle, but it's possible that Mr. F is the only person that says that, and everyone else thinks Squirtle should beat Charmander. This means that as long as Mr. F says Charmander should be Squirtle, the result will be that, no matter what anyone else thinks. So the bigger picture is that the pivot for one candidate over another doesn't just pivot the result, but also dictates an aspect of it. What we want to show next is that Mr. F isn't just a pivot, but the pivot for all pairs and thus dictates every aspect of the election. Mr. F was the pivot that changed the vote to make Charmander beat Bulbasaur, and also dictated whether Charmander would beat Squirtle. At this point, it's not necessarily true that the dictator is also the pivot. So who then is the pivot for Charmander beating Squirtle? If we wanted to start this proof over with this new pair, notice that we begin with Squirtle beating Charmander unanimously, and we'd one at a time look at scenarios where each person prefers Charmander over Squirtle. Once Mr. F has Charmander beating Squirtle, the result must be that Charmander beats Squirtle, since he dictates that. So the pivot for Charmander beating Squirtle must either be him or before him. Similarly, who's pivotal in saying Squirtle should beat Charmander? Again, if we start this proof over with that pair, notice that it begins with everyone saying Charmander beats Squirtle. As we look at the votes where each person moves Squirtle above Charmander, nothing anyone says before Mr. F can change the fact that Charmander beats Squirtle since Mr. F dictates that. So, the pivot for Squirtle over Charmander can only be with or after Mr. F. Now if we repeat the argument with Charmander and Squirtle switched, we see that the pivot for Squirtle over Charmander cannot be after Mr. F, and the pivot for Charmander over Squirtle cannot be before Mr. F. So Mr. F is the only person that can be the pivot for Squirtle over Charmander and Charmander over Squirtle, as well as dictate the aspects that those pivots are responsible for. In fact, if we repeat the entire argument for all the different pairs of Pokemon, we will find that Mr. F is the pivotal voter for every pair, meaning that he's also the dictator for every pair, and thus over the entire election. In other words, the only voting system where we get unanimity and independence of irrelevant alternatives is a dictatorship where one person decides the entire election regardless of what anyone else has to say. Mr. F's voice is the only one that matters. This result, proved by Kenneth Arrow, is known as Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. At a high level, Arrow's Theorem tells us that it's impossible to have fair elections using voters' ranked preferences. It doesn't matter how you try to obfuscate it with rounds or the Electoral College, any system that collects votes from voters through ranked preferences or less must violate at least one of the properties outlined by Arrow's Theorem. So are we totally screwed? Well, we know we definitely don't want a dictatorship, so we must give up unanimity or independence of irrelevant alternatives, or both. However, by giving these up, we'll move towards a voting system that leads to favorite betrayal, or someone who doesn't put their favorite candidate first because they're scared that a candidate they don't like might win. With these voting systems, there's often a benefit to lying and putting your favorite candidate lower to optimize the result of the election. It devolves into a two-choice election where people vote against their least favorite instead of for their most favorite just like the system we have today. There's a lot of unrest in our current political climate where we feel as though the options available to us don't reflect the way we truly feel. This isn't some sad fluke, but a necessary equilibrium because of Arrow's Theorem. Is there anything else that we can do? Well, we started with one important assumption. We're using the voters' ranked preferences to come up with our system. 
perhaps we can get more information from the voter to better understand their true feelings. But exploring better voting systems will have to wait for a future video. For now, thank you for supporting this channel.